Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about a children's show and this is Phineas and Ferb, which of course is on the Disney Channel. Um, now Phineas and Ferb has been on for a couple of years, I think two years if I'm not mistaken, but it could be three. And when it first came out, I remember that the younger years in my secondary school were obsessed with it. And I'm thinking, you kids are obsessed with a cartoon. What the hell? Um, and I never watched it, I never bothered watching it. I sort of knew what it was about, but I, I, I knew that it wasn't really for me, or at least I thought so. Um, but then when I moved back, and I, I now live with my younger siblings, as most of you guys will know, and they watch the Disney Channel. So a lot of the time I have a great, great excuse to sit and watch kids' TV. And the, especially my brother really likes Phineas and Ferb, so it was always on, and I sort of started to watch it bit by bit, you know, I'd maybe pay attention here and there. And then I found myself sitting watching an entire episode, and then another one and then another one and it just kept going and going and now I find that I put it on willingly even if there's nobody else in the house which is amazing um, there is one particular reason why I'm starting to fall in love with this program but I will tell you that when I talk about the casting um, but just in case you don't know it's about Phineas and Ferb who are two brothers and they're, they're, they're technically younger children you know they're about 10 or something but um, each day they go and create a new invention in their back garden much to the annoyance of their older sister Candace um, for example, the, the last episode I watched, they created a giant, giant bowling ball to get into the um, Book of World Records for having the largest bowling ball. So they create this very gigantic bowling ball that you can steer from inside. There's ones where they've created their own, they've made their own restaurant, um, ones where you can meet people in a certain time and things. All these really wacky inventions that you could not physically build in the real world. So it gives it that slight sense of adventure, fun and um, imagination, you know, it's, it's really quite good. And they always annoy their older sister Candace, they get in her way and she wants to tell their mom. You know, she wants to get them all, tr her two brothers into trouble. But by the end of every episode they've cleared up the mess and somehow vanished this ginormous invention before Candace tells their mom and she never believes them. So it's really quite interesting. Um, you never know what you never know what's going to come out next. You, know, you don't know what they're going to create next because you know, there's no limit with their inventions. They create some wacky, wacky things. Um, there's also sort of a, a sub Sorry, mate, my hair is all over my face. There's like a, a subplot with each episode of, with Perry the Platypus. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really care for that part of the show. Um, but it, it doesn't take up much time, so it's not a problem. Now, the casting. For me, there is one particular voice in this which I love because it is an animated cartoon. And the mom, I love her. The, the mom is voiced by Caroline Ray, who you guys know is one of two of the most spectacular people in the world you know she's the most amazing person ever along with somebody else um so the fact that she voices the mom is amazing but it's also quite frustrating because when when i hear her voice you know the mom comes onto the screen and you can hear caroline's voice and i want to see her you know uh, i'm like where's caroline where is she of course she's not on the screen because it's an, an animation but the fact that it's voiced by caroline makes it a bit more special I, I, the show itself is still really really good but I just get a little bit more excited when, when the mom's on. And the mom is on quite a bit. Um, she's not like a character that appears every fifth episode or anything. She's in every episode. I th well, every episode that I've seen, I think she is in every episode. Um, but yeah, it's just a really thoroughly entertaining children's TV show. A lot of people don't like to admit that they watch kids' TV. Um, for example, most people I know will sit and watch it, but they won't admit it. But I do. I hold up my hands and say, I watch kids' TV. So what? It's light entertainment, you don't need to think too much about it, and it cheers you up, and I really do enjoy it. So Phineas and Ferb is what a lot of people would call a guilty pleasure, I just call it a TV show that I like. It is really good, it is obviously aimed at younger children. My younger sister watches it, she's five, um, but my older brother, no my younger brother who is older than my sister, he's, how old is he? He's eight, um, so I think he's about bang on the target audience, and he does enjoy it, but I'm 18 and I love it. Um, so go and check it out if you haven't. As I said, it took me two years or something to actually sit down and properly watch it. So I've been missing it all this time. It's one of those things, because you know how Disney always make films, like they made the Spongebob movie, I know that's Nickelodeon. Um, but they make films of their shows, and I don't always really care for the films, but I think I would go and pay to see a Phineas and Ferb movie. I don't think there's one, is there? I don't know. But yeah. So please feel free to leave comments and things and let me know your thoughts on this. Um, also let me know if you like to watch it as well. Don't try and hide back and say that you don't watch it if you do. Even if you're, you know, 35 years old, it doesn't matter. Because um, there's some sort of thrill you get out of watching kids TV show at any age. In fact, I prefer watching kids TV now to what I did 10 years ago. 
yeah. So please feel free to leave comments and things. Any requests for any videos, please let me know. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.